Hi, and welcome to UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one, we'll take a look at connecting, disconnecting, and using transactions against a SQL Server database from UiPath. So, let's get to it. Okay, so we're inside Studio. And the first thing we want to do is go to Manage Packages, go to All Packages, and we want to import the UiPath database activities package. So we'll select it, click install, click save. Now if we go to this app integration group and the database group, we can see that we have six database activities. And we'll look at connect, disconnect, and start transaction in this video. In the next video, we'll look at these three. So if we drag in a connect activity, we can see that this activity has three main properties. Connection string, which is basically the address and uh, credential information and other things for the database. The provider name, which is the name of the library that we want to use when sending messages to that database. And then the database connection, which is basically a property that returns the database connection object to a variable that we define. So let's define that. We'll call it my connection. And we can see in the variables pane that now we have my connection and that, that is of type database connection. So we could type in the connection string and the provider name, or we could use the configure connection button. And in here, use the connection wizard button. And here we can select that we want to connect to a SQL Server database. We want to use the SQL Server data provider for .NET. And in this next dialog, we have to provide it with the name of the server, that's a local machine, and with the name of the SQL Server instance on that server. Also, we'll need to tell it which database do we want to use, and we want to use Northwind. We could also use some advanced options, and there's quite a few of those. Something we could adjust is the connection timeout, how long should we wait in each connection attempt, and if it fails, should we retry it again, how many times should we retry it, and with what interval. And there's a ton of other options we can configure, but for now, we'll just click OK. We'll test the connection, and it succeeded, and we'll click OK, OK, and OK. Now we can see that both the connection string and the provider name has been filled out. So now our connection is ready. We'll execute a quick query, and for this activity, we need to provide the name of the connection to the database that it should use, and that'll be the my connection variable. Also, we'll type in a simple query here. Then we'll drag in a disconnect activity, and this disconnect activity will basically need also the name of the connection that it needs to close. So in between the connect and the disconnect activities, we could have a number of these query activities. But for now, we just have one. And we'll try to run it. And it runs for just a second. And if we check the output window, we can see that it started and it ended. And it didn't throw any exceptions. So I think we're good. Now, there's another way of connecting to a database. And that's using the start transaction activity. So we'll use that. We'll drag it into a sequence. And basically, everything we do inside of this sequence here will be part of one transaction. So either all of them succeed or none of them succeed. So if we try to uh, to uh, add a couple of, of activities in here, first, of course, we'll need to configure the connection. And I'll just do that really quickly using the wizard. And we'll return that to a new variable called transaction connection. So inside this sequence, for each of these two activities, we'll also need to provide the name of the connection that they use. And this first one will basically delete from a table called people. The next activity down here will also use the same connection. But this one will try to delete from the customer's table. Now, 
if this one succeeds and this one succeeds, everything is good. But if, if this one succeeds and this one fails, then whatever we did in this one will be rolled back. But let's take a quick look at our database. This is the database diagram. And here we can see that the people table is not related to anything else. So we can delete records from this one without any problems. The customers table, however, is related to the orders table. Every order has been placed by a customer. And in this relation, there's a constraint saying that we cannot delete anything in the customers table if it's referenced by the orders table. Let's quickly take a look at the people table. It only has two records in it. Joe Brown and Ellis Johnson. Let's drag that down in the corner here. And I'll also reduce the size of my UI path window. So what happens if I set a breakpoint at this second query and run it and run the whole sequence? Well, we break when we get to the second one. And it seems like the delete from people uh, executed fine. And if we go here and actually execute this select statement again, we can see that the table is actually empty. But now this one will fail because of the constraint I showed you before. So if I keep running and running, we'll actually see the people table be populated again as this transaction rolls back the actions that I took in the first query. So this is a quick look at connecting, disconnecting from database and also using the start transaction activity. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and hit the uh, notification bell so you know when I post new videos. In the next video, I'll show you how to make statements against the database using the non-query and the query and the insert activities. So stay tuned for that one. Thank you.